Well, these men creep in. Notice they're creeping like Satan. And they lead them captive. Having them thinking that they're going to teach them how to be pleasing to God. And they just put religion. Look what it says in verse seven. Ever learning. They're learning all these new things, yet never able to come to a knowledge of the what? You know, you can just be taught the Bible. You could spend years and years in the Bible and never come to an understanding of the word rightly divided until someone else gives it to you and you believe it. Having a form of godliness. Let me show you how that worked in time past. Go to Exodus chapter 32. Here's a beautiful picture in Israel's history of a form of godliness. Exodus 32, look at verse 1. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron, that's Moses' brother, the high priest, and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives and your sons, and your daughters and bring them unto me. By the way, right there, I just want to make this comment about earrings. Piercings, ear piercings in the Bible, it, it, it has to do with you being subject to an authority. The men of Israel, their wives, their sons, and their daughters had these earrings in there, and, and it was earrings saying they under that man's authority. So did slaves or servants, they would do that too, okay? Just think about that. The reason women have earrings and men usually don't is because that was a sign that the wives or the daughters were under the father's or the husband's authority. That's what was going on here. Verse 3. And all the people break off the golden earrings which are in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. And watch this. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool. God told him, don't do that. After he had, after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, these be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Now, okay, now, now they made a golden calf, a type of Satan, who's a cherub. They're worshiping an idol. Israel is. Look at verse 5. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, tomorrow is a feast to Satan. Is that what it said? Hmm. So you mean... God's people can be worshiping God, the Lord, and yet it be idolatry. Sure you can. Most of the body of Christ, especially on Sundays and Wednesdays, midweeks, are worshiping the Lord, yet they're committing idolatry. Because they're not worshiping the Lord as God told them. Israel didn't worship the Lord as God told them through Moses. And the body of Christ is not worshiping the Lord as God told us through who? The Apostle Paul. The body of Christ is doing the same idol worshiping that the nation of Israel is doing right there. Israel says, these idols is the Lord. People are praising Jesus, but it's another Jesus. You got to rightly divide the scriptures, okay? The name of God today, the name of the Lord Jesus is according to the revelation of the mystery. That's the grace of God. He says, now watch what Paul says, according to the grace of God. If you're not serving the Lord Jesus Christ, according to the Pauline grace message, you're committing idolatry. That's what Paul is saying. OK, so you better watch the name of the Lord. And, and his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. It's according to Pauline true. Now, with the time we have left, we got about 15, 17 minutes. I am going to read by the way, 1 Corinthians 3, Paul says, according to the grace of, the, of God to given to me as a wise master builder. 1, 1 Corinthians 3.10, you need to worship God according to Pauline grace. Now, let's read chapter 2 of 2 Thessalonians. This is, I believe, the mo one of the most difficult passages to understand in the Bible. Why? Look at verse 2, 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 2. I'll, I'll tell you why, and I'm going to get this on tape. That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of the Lord is at hand. Is that what it said? The day of what? Christ. 
And because of those words, the day of Christ, particularly men who don't rightly divide the scriptures, they, they all mess that up. But sadly to say, because some brothers who even rightly divide don't leave the book in its context. The context of 2 Thessalonians is a future look of the 70th week of Daniel, 70th week, the tribulation period. Tribulation on the earth, particularly with Israel, okay? What we're going to see is that, that, that term day of Christ is a reference to what the prof, prophetic program calls the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord has to do with the day of his wrath, okay? Paul already explained to these saints in 1 Thessalonians that it's the Lord Jesus Christ. So when Paul says the day of Christ, he's not talking about the rapture here. And that's where people go wrong. Now, I'm going to put this on the tape because I get people emailing me and calling me. Don't listen to anybody explain anything about the Bible, especially this passage, if they don't rightly divide. That's the first thing. Most of the people who confuse other people are teachers and preachers who don't rightly divide God's word. So anybody teaching you anything from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and they're not, they, don't, they don't exalt Paul's office, ministry, and message, don't listen to them. I get calls and emails about this and people are all confused listening to men who don't rightly divide. Because we rightly divide the scriptures, we also understand that every book Paul writes has a thing. We're going to see that this is a future. So let's read the, let's read the entire chapter, and then we'll, we'll get into as many verses as we can. I'm going to read all 17 verses. You can follow along. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved.